Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It is Rachel here from Makers Gonna Learn, your ultimate die cutting community. And today I have a very fun video all about how to not waste vinyl and how to make the best of the materials that you have and just a bunch of tips and tricks that will just help you all make the most of you know everything that you guys have and, and you know new materials that you want to cut and things that you want to try and keep organized and things like that because it's so easy to waste vinyl and as we all know vinyl does not grow on trees it is not cheap and we want to keep all that we can we want to keep all of our scraps because we can use those in the future most definitely so in this video that is what we will be tackling today so i'm really excited to get into it the first tip that i have for you guys is do not cut a piece of vinyl for something that you're cutting before your Cricut does. So what I mean by that is if you have a 12 by 12 mat and a 12 by 12 piece of vinyl and you know you're gonna be cutting something that's four by six inches, just go ahead and lay the entire um, piece of vinyl on your mat here. And then once it's done cutting, you can then cut it off. It's not worth cutting like a four by six square right, right then to place it on there because you're not gonna be able to get as close. You're not gonna be able to uh, know exactly where the Cricut's gonna cut it. You could cut off and end up uh, wasting more vinyl than you meant to because it might not, you might not have put enough down or less enough and you have to recut it. It's so much easier if you have a 12 by 12 sheet, put the entire sheet on here, let the Cricut cut, and then with a craft knife, you can cut out the section that you want to cut. Um, I will demonstrate that here in a moment, but I just wanted to stress that importance. A lot of people like to do uh, weeding boxes, which is where they like, you know, put a square, weld a square or attach a square to the back of their image and the Cricut would go and cut out a box for them to weed. Now that's an okay thing to do. Number one, it takes more time with your Cricut. And number two, I honestly think it wastes more vinyl than it's worth because if you create a weeding box around this, it is actually not gonna let you have the vinyl right around it. It's gonna go a little bit more than you want it to go. And it's gonna, it's just gonna kind of be a little bit awkward and you don't really want to do that when you can just do it so much easier on the mat. Now we're gonna get questions on I shouldn't cut on my mat. mat. Why are you cutting on your mat? Will I cut through my mat? Um, you will not cut through your mat. We use the Cricut True Control knife right here. It is like a Cricut craft knife, an X-Acto knife, and we have never cut through our mat with it. You'll know when you're holding it how much pressure you need to use to cut this out. We have done this for years and it has worked incredible. So we'll go ahead and switch over to the other camera and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are. We have the full sheet 12 by 12 on our mat here. And if you guys can see in the light, let me try and move it around for you so you guys might can see it. I have cut out here Mama Bear on our uh, vinyl here, if you guys can see it right there. There you go. It says Mama Bear. Sorry guys, it took me a while to find it. Um, I cut that out. So it's already been cut, but it's on this 12 by 12 sheet. But now you guys probably can't see it, but I can see the exact line where the Mama Bear's feet are and her little nose is. So now I can take my Cricut True Control knife and go in here and cut right next to her nose and turn it around and cut right next to her feet and not waste any vinyl at all. So let me show you what I did, guys. This is also another hack, so I'll share this hack with you as well. Um, you can save a ton of vinyl by going with gravity. And what I mean by that is peeling off your materials from the mat upside down. So especially if your mat's full and you're not you know, gonna get anything on your table on your mat, you're gonna flip your mat over and then you're gonna peel basically your mat from your material instead of your material from your mat. Now, typically, you would flip this over, grab the corner and just rip up, but we're not gonna do that here. We're gonna flip this over and remove our mat from our material, basically. That way, this is completely flat, it's straight, it looks great, and looky there, you can see on the corner where we got our little mama bear there. I can even weed this right now to show you guys. Now we do wanna weed on the mat. That's what we love to do is weed on the mat, but I'll just show you this. Looky there. Look at her nose there and her feet. Look how close I was able to get by just hand cutting that. And there's of course mama in there, but I'm not gonna weed that. I just wanted to do that so you guys can show how close I was able to cut there. And then, 
More importantly, that hack is kind of for this extra. So you see all this extra vinyl here on this mat. It looks beautiful. Well, if I were to grab it like this and just rip it up, it could, if this mat was sticky enough, curl our vinyl as we go and actually bunch it up and create ripples in our vinyl. And we don't want that. That could actually ruin our vinyl. And I'm just going to be upfront and honest, Cricut brand vinyl, it would ruin. Cricut brand vinyl is very thin. And uh, while it has some pros and cons to being thin like that, um, it ripples so easily. So what we would do if this was Cricut brand vinyl, this is Orcal 651 and we do, this is the best vinyl that we've ever used. However, uh, we still use this and practice it with all of our materials. We're going to flip it over and then peel up our mat from our material. And then there, we peeled it up. It's still nice and flat. It's still straight. There's no ripples. There's no, uh, there's no folding. There's no curling, nothing. So that is what we absolutely love about that hack as well. The next hack I have is to try and use scraps before you get another sheet. So you guys could get a full sheet of this or grab a whole roll of your black vinyl if you, let's just pretend this is black. If you wanted to use black, you could grab your 12 by 12 full sheet of black and use it for a mug or if you are being good and collecting your scraps, you could go into your scraps and try and find a scrap. I urge you all to look in your scraps first. It's, I know sometimes it's hard to do. You have a full roll of vinyl sitting right there on the counter and I know it's easy to just grab it and get your project going. But guys, listen, you've been saving these scraps for this exact reason. Go in your scrap bin first, search through your scraps, see if there's anything that you can use. Um, especially for a mug, you only need like three by four inches. You really don't need that big of a scrap. But a lot of us forget to go check our scraps and that is just so sad. I know that we have some scrap piles that are kind of piling up as well and we need to be sure that we are checking those often. And I'll just go ahead and segue into another tip that I have and that is to make sure you're storing these properly, okay? You wanna make sure you're storing them properly because number one, It'll make them easier for you to find. That means if they're easier to find, it'll you'll be more inclined to go look for them if you know they're kind of organized. If they're all thrown in a bin, you're not gonna have the patience or the drive to go through that bin and to search for, oh, well, this is vinyl, oh, well, this is HTV, this is Sportflex, this is you know permanent, this is chalkboard. You know, it's a bunch of, it's just a mess. You need to keep everything nice and organized. It'll be more organized, you'll be more inclined to check it, and then you will not waste materials by doing that. It is so easy to grab a material and then look at it for two seconds and think, oh, I know what this is, and then go and cut it and then it be incorrect. So that is another tip as well, is to make sure that you um, know what material you are cutting. Make sure that it is, if it's organized well, then you won't have this problem. But another way to organize well is to label these. Now, on the backs of these, these so conveniently have um, 651 Oracle and Starcraft permanent adhesive, like these are labeled. So you really don't have to label these if, unless you want to. Maybe you, you uh, are a bit hard of seeing and you want to make it very large. So you can just put vinyl, just, you know, something big, vinyl, you know. Vinyl, if you want to make the letters big, you can do 651, that way you can see that it's 651. This one is StarCraft, you know? And then it's most important for the uh, HTVs, really. If you have HTV up on the very, very corner of your clear transfer sheet, uh, mark what it is. Say, you know, Sportflex, this is Caesar Easyweed, this is Cricut brand. Brands are way more important in, um, HTV than they are vinyl because different brands of HTV might need to be set on different heat settings and things like that. And a lot of HTVs don't have any type of anything on the back. They'll just literally look like this and you'll be able to feel them and be like, well, I know that's HTV, but you know, what kind is it? Is that, and you won't, maybe you won't remember it. And when you're using a material, it's so easy to say, oh, I'll totally know where that's at. I know what that is. I just used it. Well, in six months, you might not really remember where you got that teal color of HTV or what brand it is. You know, so making sure to keep everything good and organized, make sure you know where everything's at. You have separate bins for your separate materials. That's another great tip. Have a bin for, you know, HTV and a bin for regular vinyl. Have some folders, you know, filled with um, photo inserts. You know, I feel like the, um, what are they called? You have uh, paper 
protectors so you know you have like this just the sleeves that you can put your little pieces in if you're trying to collect your little piece you can have a folder for HTV a folder for vinyl just really whatever you like to do there's a million ways to store vinyl scraps so look those up on the internet see which ones work for you just find your own rhythm but just make sure you keep these good and organized because again guys you won't be able to you know use your material to the best of your ability if you can't find it if you don't know what it is if you use it improperly make sure you're labeling them, make sure you know what they are, make sure they're very well organized. And also guys, something I failed to mention was if you don't organize these properly, they can actually go bad. We have actually seen vinyl and HTV go bad before. And you'll be able to notice if your vinyl is kind of just a very weird texture. It doesn't lay on right. The adhesive is really weird. Or for HTV, it just won't adhere right. It will not adhere. It weeds weird. It cuts weird. It might have you know went bad and that can happen over the course of you know some years or if you're maybe crafting in a garage or upstairs where it's super humid and hot or maybe you're in your attic or in your you know in your sunroom in your house with you know that's like kind of like a screened in porch I mean if you leave those there they're going to change because of the elements so it's really good to be mindful as well of where you do store these and just make sure you store them well and also guys if you don't know what you're cutting like if this was chalkboard vinyl for instance which it's matte it's a little confusing it could be chalkboard vinyl but you're not sure if you load it in your machine and cut it at regular vinyl setting it might not cut properly and you might have wasted your scrap here or wasted an even bigger piece because maybe you didn't know what it was um, that is another super important reason why you should always um, label these because Cricut has a chalkboard vinyl setting and it's super important to get those settings right and everything so just be mindful and the next thing guys is to always make test cuts so this is a gorgeous glitter vinyl that we have and see there's nothing on the back this is why we need to label this there's nothing on the back but if you can hear that it's textured it's a little bit textured it's not super flat it's not super silky it's got some texture to it it's got some sparkle in it which is gorgeous by the way and it's a little bit see-through like look that's my hand underneath there you can kind of see that so this is an odd material so make sure that number one you label it and number two you make sure that you're using the correct setting make sure you make test cuts is the big 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 thing so this clearly 12 by 12 you paid some money for this i don't care if it was 10 cents you still paid money for this meaning you need to get your money's worth out of it um, always make test cuts before you cut a material you never have before right up here in the corner uh, cut a star cut a smiley face cut a teeny tiny decal test your limits with this up in the corner with just a couple inches and see how it cuts see if it cuts well if it's not deep enough if it's too deep uh, before you use a large piece or the whole piece you want to make sure that this new material you've never used will cut properly even if you're like okay this is Cricut brand glitter vinyl there's Cricut brand glitter vinyl there's a setting for that I'm just gonna well if you've never used it even if there's a setting for it you don't know if your Cricut will cut it perfectly maybe you have a blade that's really dull and it's not going to cut it perfectly maybe you need to for some reason calibrate it maybe you need to clear some lint or some dust off of it maybe you got to give it more pressure you don't know so you need to make test cuts to make sure that you will get success out of this because that is a surefire way to waste material is not being 100% positive that the cut setting you choose will cut this correctly. And the biggest tip that I have for you all through all of this, how not to waste your vinyl the very most, is just to go slow and take your time and make sure you're paying attention. Too often we just wanna kinda of rush through our crafts and get them done and make sure that we are maybe fulfilling an order for a customer or finishing something on time for a friend, or maybe you're just trying to rush through making yourself some shirts for a vacation or something like that upcoming, and that's just not practical you guys have to slow down and make sure that you are checking all of your boxes and doing exactly what you're supposed to do because nothing wastes more vinyl than the little things that you can do to accidentally slip up when you're not paying attention things like rushing while you're weeding vinyl it's so easy to do that to you know think that your Cricut has cut it just perfect and you peel up something and you just kind of lost it you have to recut it you've wasted so much vinyl there choosing the wrong material setting is another super common thing that a lot of people do that can really waste vinyl if you're trying to 
cut glitter HTV and you leave it on regular HTV because you're not thinking about it or maybe you're a little bit distracted, that right there can ruin a project because it will not cut properly and you will have wasted all of that material. Again, another simple, super simple thing that we all do sometimes is not mirror our HTV. That is a super simple step that we can miss if you guys are distracted or rushing or trying to do too many things at one time. It's really something we want to avoid and you can avoid that by just kind of going slow. Another thing that I do a lot, and I really don't mean to, I'm not the best speller in the world, but I misspell some words when I'm working with fonts in Cricut Design Space. It's super, super inconvenient. It's super frustrating, especially if you go ahead and go through and make your project and finish your project and then realize it. Or even worse, you post it online or you give it to your customer and they notice that it's misspelled. So make sure that you are checking your spelling as you go and taking extra time and extra care into projects with words in that. Um, you know, because just not realizing these little things, not realizing, you know, that your word is misspelled or that you didn't mirror your HTV, little things like that can really add up to a project fail and help you guys along the way of just wasting your material and we really don't want you guys to do that. So the biggest tip out of all these is just to go slow and take your time and enjoy your time crafting because a lot of us don't get to craft as much as we would like. So really take the time that you do get to craft and do a lot of it and do it well and to the best of your ability. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned a lot and had a lot of fun. Again, guys, give this video a like if you did enjoy it and leave us a comment down below if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.